Sell me this car. One of my favorite movies of all time is The Wolf of Wall Street and that classic scene, sell me this pen. Now, obviously, we do fitness sales for over 100 gyms all over Australia and New Zealand. I love sales. It is my passion. I manage a team of 11 reps. So I'd like to think I know a thing or two about sales. And the principles of sales, regardless of what you sell, will translate across the board from fitness to, in my opinion, selling this car. So some context. So my wife and I, Ellen, are looking to start a family in the near future in the next 12, 24 months, and we are looking for a brand new family car. Now, the number one reason why we're looking for a family car is my wife drives a Kia Picato, very, very small, compact car. She drives it into the city because she works uh, smack bang in the middle of the CBD. Now, she could just be saying this, I'm not exactly sure, but apparently the Kia Picato is too small for a kid, car seats, prams, whatever else you have to put in the car when you have a kid, to be honest, I do not know. But that is the number one reason why we went in there, and that is the problem we're looking to solve. So I'm going to explain to you what happened in the sales process with this sales rep, and then, in my opinion, what he should have done, because I'm telling you, like my wife was ready to buy, and I was willing to buy yesterday, but he just didn't do a good enough job. And I gave an objection. And the objection was, I need to speak to Mitch. He does our accountant. I, 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 I need to speak to Mitch. He is our accountant. Uh, he does all of our bookkeeping. I'm not really sure about GST and depreciation. So I'll talk to him first. But that wasn't the reason why. So we walked in there yesterday about two o'clock and we walked straight up to this brand new car Kia Sorento 2024. It was the best car I've ever seen. in. It had all the bells and whistles, seat warmers, like a full sunroof the entire length of the car, seven seats, uh, climate control. Uh, it had like, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, in the, what is it called? Uh, had blind spot cameras. It had every single feature you could possibly imagine. Even the rear view mirror was actually a video camera. So every single person in the car could see what was in the rearview mirror, not just the driver, if they're looking directly at it. Every feature you could ever imagine. And we sat in the car with the sales rep for a good five minutes, and we, pre we pressed every single button in that car. Now, from there, me and Ellen went and took that car for a test drive, drove for about 20 minutes, and of course, it drove amazingly. Of course, it drove better than the Kia Picato. And of course, it was an absolute blast being in that car. Connected my iPhone put on the new Eminem album, blasted the speakers, wireless Apple CarPlay. I'm telling you, this car had every single thing we were looking for. And more importantly, it was solving the number one problem, which is was big enough for us to fit a pram, a stroller in, and hopefully a few car seats in the future when we do have kids. Now, we bought the car back to the dealership, sat down with the sales rep, and he continued to tell me all about the features and benefits. We sat down, he brought up the pricing, and we went through two-wheel drive, uh, four-wheel drive, turbo diesel, a hybrid engine, the amount of kilometers each one of those cars get, how they drive differently in the wet. We went through accessories, car mats, um, more storage, tinted windows, and he just kept crapping on about the features. And to be honest, I am still confused in regards to what is the difference between turbo diesel and hybrid. I don't know. And he kept harping on that, but that wasn't the problem that we're actually trying to solve. From there, he had a final price and he sat us down with the, I guess, the finance team. So at this point, the sale was not closed. Like he, we, he didn't ask us, do you have any more questions? Do you have any concerns? All that type of stuff. We sat down with the finance guy, went through, okay, if we put X amount down, this would be the repayment. If we put the X amount down, this would be the repayment. Now, at this point, I gave them an objection. It was, I need to talk to my business partner, Mitch. He does all of our bookkeeping, all of our accounting. I'm not exactly sure how it works with GST and car depreciation at the moment compared to when I bought my last car. It was during COVID. I think I'd wipe the whole thing off. Now, my wife wanted to buy this fucking car. Like she was ready to sign on the dotted line. And at the end, he used an urgency tactic. He said, hey, this Kia Sorento, it is a hybrid car, first of its kind in Australia. There's a six to 12 month wait to get the car if you don't purchase today. And I was like, well, I could probably purchase tomorrow and still get it in six to 12 months. But there was a few things that really stood out. Like the urgency tactic didn't work because I knew it wasn't true. Because if I called the guy right now, I could get that car today. I could. And I could probably get it faster than six or 12 months. But 
this is the reason why I didn't buy. So me and my wife are going back and forth. She wants a Sorento. She currently has a Picanto, much smaller car. I think, and if you watch this, Ellen, I love you, but the car, the car is fine. I think we can get the car seats in a Kia Picanto. It might, it might not be the most comfortable, but it definitely isn't impossible. That was what that was my thought leaving the dealership. And my wife's like, "We gotta buy it. We gotta buy it. We gotta buy it. We gotta buy it." And it's amazing, even someone like myself who coaches sales for a living. You cannot help but get caught up in a sales process because I was at that dealership, I was in that car, I was on the test drive, and a big part of me wanted that car too. And I am confident if this guy did a better job of selling this car to me, I would have walked out and I would have bought it. Now, this is what he should have done. Now, on the screen in front of me, I'm reading my actual script we use for our fitness sales um, calls, and I want to explain to you how relevant this script would have been at that car sale and how I would have sold this car. So I walked in the dealership, approached the car and the sales rep should have started with, thanks for coming in. Do you have a few minutes? Yep. Yeah, cool. Okay. What sparked your interest at looking at the Kia Sorento today? And he would have discovered that last week I was on the Sunshine Coast. I visited my friend, James Kent. He has a Kia Sportage. One kid about to have two kids and he said, Jamie, if you're looking at a new car, I wouldn't get the Sportage. I would get the next size up, the Sorento, as I feel like two kids is going to be too small with a pram. What a great way to start the sale. So I've had a friend recommend that I look at this car if I want to have two kids in the future. That would have been a great place to start. Now, from there, what he could have went into is the situation phase of the script. What type of car are you driving now? She would have discovered it's a Kia Picanto. And what do you like about the car? It's compact, good on fuel. What don't you like about it? Oh, it's a little bit too small to have kids. Oh, okay. So that's that's what brought you in. You're concerned that if you if you don't upgrade car, you're not going to be able to have a comfortable ride for you and your kids. None of that. Just straight to the features and benefits. He didn't ask, is this the first car you've looked at? Have you been looking for a while? Why the Sorento do you like? Have you looked at the Sportage, a little bit smaller, a little bit cheaper? There was no real needs analysis, no discovery phase of me buying this car. It was straight to two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, turbo diesel. And just like your prospects, I don't give a fuck about your workout. <laughs> like The reason we went to buy the car was to fit our future family into the car. Now, imagine this. There was a Kia Picanto, Ellen's car, very, very close to the Sorento. Now, the number one reason why, why exactly would you buy this car is so that we can have a future with kids and their prams and strollers and nappies and whatever else you have with kids fit into the car. Imagine if this sales rep walked us over to the Picanto, he opened up the boot and he put, tried to put a pram or stroller into it and it clearly didn't fit. I would have felt very differently because I'm still not sure. Imagine if you went to the Picanto and he opened up the door and he had a car seat there and it was extremely tight. Imagine if he said the Kia Picanto has a three-star safety rating and the Sorento has a five-star safety rating, absolutely crucial to raise a family in. From there, on the test drive, as we came back, as he was going through more features and more benefits and more solutions that we didn't care about, he kept talking about the two-wheel drive versus the four-wheel drive versus the turbo is when he should have asked like, so can you see yourself in that car raising a family? How did it feel driving around? Did the car feel safe? Do you realize that the Kia Picanto is a small car? The boot is that big. The boot is that big. If someone rams you from the back, there's a high likelihood of your kid getting impacted and getting hurt. He said, none of that. Just for two-wheel, four-wheel, turbo diesel. And if he clearly demonstrated to me that the Kia Picanto was actually too small to fit a pram in, let alone two prams, let alone a car seat, another car seat with two kids, and then also expanded on the fact that this car is unsafe compared to the Sorento. What's more important to me, that, those features or the fact that we had fucking seat warmers? And our fitness sales script, which is heavily influenced by NAPQ, Jeremy Miner, it can almost apply to anything that you ever sell. And the big takeaway from me was like, you have to find out the exact reason they want to purchase. 
And then from there, you have to find out the exact reason why it is so important to them. Ellen Jamie, I can completely understand why you came in today. I, I myself have two kids. I started out with a Kia Picanto. Tried it at the start, but it was way too convenient. It was way too difficult. My wife was always complaining about getting the kids in and out of the car. We always had to take my bigger car. We're constantly changing car seats over. And while the Sorento is definitely more of an investment today, not only will your kids be more safe, but it's going to make those early stages of being parents a lot easier with this brand new car. Does that, does that make sense? So much better than two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive. And then the worst part was, is as we were like going through the features, adding car mats and all this other stuff that we didn't care about, he didn't trial close. Do you have any concerns? Do you have any thoughts? Do you have any worries? Do you have any questions? Can I, is there something I haven't gone over yet? So like before even buying the car, he was trying to sell us the car seats and car mats. Back to the fitness example, if you have a, a mixed martial arts gym, sell the boxing gear, sell the gi in club, don't sell it on that first phone call. And then he hadn't even made the sale before we were going through some of the finance options that we could have explored. And right up until the end, he kept talking about this hybrid engine, which I still don't fucking know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's diesel, fuel, or electric, how it transitions. And I don't know why it gets more mileage than a turbo diesel. But again, I didn't actually care about that. I only cared about like, well, is this car the car for myself, my wife, and our potential future kids that hopefully we can raise? And I would have bought the car. I, 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 buy, <laughs> I do not need to think about things when I buy stuff. I would have bought the car on the spot if he did a great job understanding our reasons why, and more importantly, I love phone sales, but if you're doing in-person sales, imagine if he uncovered that the only reason we were in that dealership is because we were concerned that my wife's current car, the Kia Picanto, we couldn't fit two car seats and two prams into it. Imagine if he went to that car, opened the boot, tried to put it in, tried to close the boot, made a joke out of it, had the car seats in, made a joke out of it and discussed, well, hey, like the boot is here. Your kids sit here. If someone does unfortunately rear end you, there's going to be a lot of impact on those back seats. That's what he should have talked about. Not the two wheel, the four wheel and the turbo diesel. So I absolutely love sales. I love being in a sales process. About six months ago, I bought a vacuum uh, from Godfrey's and it was the best sales process I've ever been in my life. The vacuum was expensive. It was through the roof, way more than I wanted to purchase. But how he sold it to me, so oh, what made you come in today? I said, oh, we've got two mini foxies and they leave fur everywhere. If you ever see white fur over me, by the way, it's because my foxies just shed fur like you wouldn't believe. This sales guy, he threw down white fur on the carpet. And he said, this is probably the vacuum you got now. And he went over it 10 to 15 times and it was slowly picking it up, but it was very painful. The vacuum I bought, he said, mate, watch this. Whew. Straight over it, picked it up in one go. And I instantly imagined a world <laughs> where I live in where there isn't dog fur all over my house and all over my car. I went in for a cheap, like corded vacuum and I walked out with this wireless one that's got all these features, engines, parts. It's the best vacuum I've ever had. And I guess the point is the same. The guy uncovered the reason why I wanted the vacuum was because my dog shed fur everywhere. This car rep did not uncover why I wanted a car in the first place. And because he did that, I gave him an objection. I need to talk to my business partner, Mitch, which is the truth. He does all of the accounting, also the truth. He does all the bookkeeping, also the truth. I'm unsure about the GST and depreciation, also the truth but it wasn't the actual objection. The objection was, is, well, I'm not really sure if we actually need this Kia Sorento because this sales rep hasn't proven to me that the Kia Picanto isn't a good car for kids and he could have demoed it on the spot. So guys, this is a weird video of fitness talking about car sales, but the principle remains the same. People buy things for emotional reasons. Why is it important to them? And you need to uncover what that actually is before you sell them into your membership. Because I promise you, they don't care about any of the equipment in your gym. Again, thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, and like.